Okey, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. And a very good morning to everybody. So we'll start. Uh, okay, thank you very much that uh, for attending this thing today. So what we will have here is today the virtual basic critical care management course for non ICU doctors. Okay. All right. Okay. So. So what all this compose about today will uh, be, be very long day. Yes, uh, as you can see, we have done this training before uh, uh, for initially in HPKK when it started. And after that, the uh, after that, uh, the uh, in Kepala Batas uh, okay. as well as uh, the in the end was in Kepala Batas. So it'll be a very long day. Uh, coming in with initially from a bit of introduction and uh, of course we go through all the lectures it's going to be so the question comes is why me why are you all really interested today coming in as we know we are going through the scenario the worst case scenario that we ever want it to be at the moment yeah and uh, like yesterday we realized it's already 1055 in icu more than 530 ventilated this is the ever highest number of any ventilated person with a single disease in malaysia and again, it's not looking going to resolve in this current moment. And we are in the uh, mode of damage control. So we are bracing, 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 and hope that we can hold on with other measures such as vaccination to go on for this pandemic to go over. If you are to being asked to to go through the uh, to take care of ICU patients and uh, yeah, then the, and your bosses or superior telling it's a lifelong lifelong learning. Maybe you can ask seriously. <laughs> you dah kena terpaksa datang and uh, you, 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 you think it's uh, something that uh, you, you want to do. But I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, my fellow doctors, that this is a rare experience for you to be uh, in a way trained or terpaksa train in your ICU or critical care. It is not easy to be in such condition or in such a scenario that we have in. Uh, we do not have any other choice. As you can see, it's like a domino effect at the moment. More and more of the Klang Valley Hospital being turned into full COVID hospitals. So whether you like it or not, you have to handle it because as how we are managing these cases, that uh, uh, even though we are not too sure, but it is a sin, tak boleh. Kalau sekiranya kita tak ready or try to be ready, and this is what we try to provide uh, with this education for everybody understanding except uh, the fundamentals of ICU or critical care. And we are not talking to make you intensivists. Eh? Bukannya hari ini you go through, tiba-tiba dah boleh handle intensive care. No. To know the fundamental principles, do what you know, what you should do, what you're supposed to do. Decisions is definitely not yours. This will be your specialists, your consultants. They are the ones who are decision makers. But on your side, to understand what the whole story is all about. And of course, enhancing your set of skills, lines, airway management. It will be good for your CV, good for your experience, whatever what you want to do. And uh, with this uh, posting, some other, you probably interested to have a go at a critical care in the future or totally say, okay, tak mau, sorry, bye-bye, never again. So it's either of this. So it depends eh, uh, what how it will uh, appear to you. But it is definitely good CV. I can tell you, uh, I'm sure most of you who are online today are, are, are kata yang this kita ke issue eh, buat contract eh. so kalau for example you are not keen macam dah kat Malaysia so yeah go 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 somewhere else but of course it will take time uh, you kata kalau you nak take PLAP you nak go take your Australian maths apa ni uh, uh, qualifying exam and yeah go whatever uh, example uh, even for humanitarian or UN type of uh, setting as a, as a medical carer but see the CV as an EIC or critical care is uh, important in your CV so yeah and of course this is responsibility to self and humanity uh, okay for example currently I am not in the country yeah so I'm with MSF I'm currently in Afghanistan so you know these are the sets of, of where the where you can be but of course ICU critical care if it's in your CV it would enhance uh, your opportunities. All right. I'm putting this picture here. I think this is a very powerful picture, powerful graphics because it shows us, remember, this was the first day of Euro 2020. What happened was a player, Denmark player, Christian Eriksen, collapsed in the middle of the field. And what, did, what I'm trying to show here, here is 
as you can see, it's the team members who raise up to the occasion. I mean, they were, they were not trained to do this, but they came and, for example, the whole team members gathered around Christian Erikson to give him dignity. Yeah, as, as he was being resuscitated, resuscitated by the paramedics. And you can see on the left, that's the captain, as well as the goalkeeper who approached the partner and console her. Because at that time, we do not know whether Christensen would be, uh, Erikson, sorry, not Christensen, Erikson would be alive or not. And yes, they managed to resuscitate. And you can see on the right top picture there, the whole team in solidarity, not just the team members of the team, but of course the uh, team lawan juga, eh, sama-sama bring out together. So this is where we are today. And I guess everybody just has to raise up to the role. We just have to brace of the uh, COVID-19 severity that we're having at the moment, especially regarding critical care. Here, as we can see, it's we are having an ICU SOS. And of course, uh, the whole concept in terms of ICU would be space, staff, supply, and standard. Okay, in terms of space supply, this is something is being provided by KKM, trying uh, very much to increase their beds, to increase capacity, repurpose as how you are all be repurposed here. And of course, the staff, the human resource, which is the most important. We've never had enough people in ICU. And now we are forced to open up uh, critical care beds. And the only ish, uh, idea is, is to get everybody to work towards this. Of course, when we talk about COVID-19, the core topic here is infection control. So it is very important. I'm sure one and a half years, whether even though you are not directly taking care of COVID patients, I'm sure the precautions in infection control should be clear by now. Doffing, donning, the importance of this, this is core. And the reason why COVID-19 becomes a main problem is the infectivity. Hence, uh, you need to ensure good infection control in your routine care and, of course, in the airborne, uh, airborne isolation for the uh, airway uh, apa? Uh, AGP, eh? uh, airway gen apa ni? aerosol generating procedure. And, of course, the important thing is to protect your team, yourself and your patients. Just here, what I'm sharing to you in terms of level of ICU care, the usual ICU unit that we know will always be level three, which has all the facility, maybe in district hospitals or the uh, non-tertiary would have a level two where do, they do not have uh, uh, the ability, for example, for, for dialysis as level three. But yeah, for your repurposed bed, especially in the wards or the extension beds in, in uh, ED, yeah, emergency department, Oh yeah, just to recap, the numbers that we have may not reflect the, the more critically bad or the bottleneck they have in, in, in ED. I'm sure you know that how many patients are being ventilated in the emergency department waiting time to go to this ICU. So they are considered level two, but it does not impair, doesn't mean that we cannot start the ICU care from such. And that is why we are here today. In a pandemic, eh, dia tak boleh dah kita nak macam, oh, kita nak ada staff yang training, kita nak ada semua staff yang okay, no. In pandemic situ a situation, just like how the social society of critical care medicine in their pandemic preparedness that they, this has been a thing for be quite some time. I think this was uh, initiated after SARS. -CoV. They were thinking there would be one in they were a influenza pandemic that will be coming. So there'll be a tiered staffing strategy, which means that you do not need fully fully trained or experienced critical care person to be in charge of all. As you can see in this uh, slide that I have given, it's the train that you may need only like in the setup of a 24 staff, only three. Okay, but again, this depends on how your hospitals would do it. But the idea in pandemic is you need to gather as much people, but to give enough information that they know what they're supposed to do, their KPI for the job. So imagine, for 24 patients, these are the, the only trained physician uh, or, uh, or practitioners of ICU they need, maybe about three or four to cater 24 patients. Hence, I think in, in, in our center or, or in our centers that we have, I think this was uh, suggested earlier uh, in HPKK that what was done is the supervision for one to five bed, there'd be one specialist and one senior nurse of ICU train and one senior MO. And where you are all probably down there, which is the junior MOs or medical officer, but this is in terms of supervision. But as you can see, 
If you are two of them, you are in charge of four or five. So this is one COVID ICU team, the spread. And all we need is three experienced one with proper protocol, proper procedure, proper KPI that you know what you want to do. And that's the team that we have and we can expand the beds. Because the facility, as how uh, KKM has been doing, they will try to utilize and mobilize as much as possible resources and the ability to do it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's where you are. And it's a very high demanding job. So in your likely scenarios, yeah, I think number one, number most important in even the hospital setup is your triage or triage. Yeah? Tengoklah macam mana how you pronounce it. Criteria and for good prognosis, score prognosis. And this is where the critical part is for you to understand who have the better chance and who has not and to triage. Even that now we have issues, we have problems that uh, the bottleneck we have in, in, in emergency department and also in ICU. Imagine if every day we have, I mean, reported the kata dalam kita punya buat 50 kan, kita punya cat 5 per day, etc. Tapi kalau 50 kali 5 hari, dah 250. Kan? So macam mana? So, so this is very, very important in terms of planning. So they all hit it better. But again, you guys, you do not, this is not your decision. This is their decision. You have to do your job. So what are your scenarios? Number one, definitely that you're deteriorating category four and five. Or those who from category two go straight to category four. And this is where you are starting to manage them. Uh, collapse category four and five probably easier because the outcome is uh, simple whether you get them in in your 30 minutes or not but most important is to initiate the early intervention icu care even in a ward ventilation or ward repurpose icu icu care can be done it is still possible because i think we have only one disease that we are looking at at the moment of course patients have comorbids but the important initial part of the disease and of course the issue of end of life care certain patients you may not need to intubate but there must be a certain or idea or understanding how to do this end of life care for the patients and especially regarding communication there are so many things today uh, that will be discussed. So I'm just giving this introduction. Hence, the key training activities that would be in your ward would be for the repurpose IC, uh, for your repurpose ICU setup, your standard daily basic ICU monitoring. You should know about your aerosol generating procedure intubation. If you are really in ICU, you are talking about extubation. Your code blue PPE, how to know and just to know that an emergency. But it, uh, but in pandemic, there's no emergency. All right, so there's there's some some keywords or jargons there. Invasive and non-invasive ventilation, and we talk about transport of the critically ill. There will be a lot of transport that we hold that you need to do them in a proper uh, isolation. And of course, when we talk about futile management in terms of end of life care. All right, uh, I here I have uh, list out few resources which are good for your reference. So number one, in terms of basic COVID-19, we have our own Malaysia online training. We have a digital certificate and this is signed by Datuk Dr. Suresh, our ID uh, main boss. So yeah, why not? I think you should get and you should all have at least this, this training. Uh, I would suggest for you to go into the Toronto COVID-19 ICU training. Uh, this is actually very, very good resource center. I mean, everywhere in the world we have we in a way prepared for this how to train the non-icu uh, personnel and this has come in uh, i mean this has been since june last year so there are many resources in the internet just go and browse so i've given a few and here in terms of nurses uh, but let me show you i i reckon even though it says it's for nurses uh, this is actually the uh, pdf printout of that particular resource it is very good for your basic understanding of what ICU. If you do not understand what the ICU nurses does, then you will, because it doesn't work that like uh, in silo, you have to work together. So this is a good resource. Please do view this. And of course, uh, again, this checklist, I mean, if you know all this checklist, then you are ready for ICU or critical care. Uh, you want to go and not watch it satu satu. Tengok lah benda ni, if we, you can always, look uh, or refer this later in your videos and of course uh, the society of critical care medicine i mean you just google google semua ni ada so they put ada all the resources this number one from the society of critical care medicine everything you want to know especially you being a non-icu clinician or non-icu trained again this is the toronto project i really like this website and uh, yeah go through it i think we ha will ha be having our own malaysian uh, by PPUM and the MSIC, Malaysian Society Intensive Care. It's ongoing at the moment. It should be ready. It has a local flavor. So uh, hopefully 
when we are ready. So we have all the resources in Malaysia too. And again, uh, this was the website for ICU and HDU nursing. And uh, these are examples of what the resources are in there. As you can see, the left side talking about ETT, the taking care, eh, cantik, eh? and then on the right, basic bedside monitor. So what everything is explained regarding your, uh, what do you expect in your, your monitor if you're not used to your six channel or your eight channels uh, monitor. Again, in ICU, it's also about monitoring and a lot of equipment. So you need to be well-versed in that to understand. And again, this is one resource which I think is good. It's called the one page ICU.com, an example of regarding about hypoxia and hypoxemia. And this is the core of COVID-19. Eh? You're talking about hypoxia. You understand the physiology. Sometimes it be, we, that that you are to manage in, in terms of managing your patient. But uh, again, it's not a decision, but it's a learning process. It is good for you. Okay, I think uh, that is all for introduction uh, uh, i give this back to the uh, apa kita punya pengurusi majlis uh, for our opening by i think later by dr melo i think uh, thank you very much if we have any question but this is introduction to uh, for everybody to get overview what we have today and what to expect in the whole of uh, your uh, what the short term icu care all right thank you <laughs>